Let's check the futures, and they are all up right now. Looks like this is going to be the fourth straight good week that we've had. Uh, Nice change from the previous months. David Bonson is here for the hour. David, looking to open with a modest rally. Is it time to get off the sidelines and get back into the markets? Well, it wasn't ever time to get on the sidelines, right? Because that timing in and out of it just doesn't ever work out for people. It doesn't work out for professionals. It doesn't work out for novices. It's very hard to do. The reason why I like being fully invested right now is because for us, we're dividend investors, so we're always collecting these dividends up or down in the market. But I think you want to eliminate the risk of timing. The problem is people thinking that means to go back into the highly speculative stuff, Mm -hmm. the real overpriced things. Some of those stocks were down 70, 80, 90 percent. We don't want to go back there. By the way, my Marine son is all about he's he's just learning to invest because he's about to leave the Marines, going to the private sector. He's he's gotten into a lot of dividend funds, these broad dividends, S&P funds. Is that the right place to go instead of? Picking particular stocks with good dividends? Well, since that's what we do for a living, I guess I'm the wrong guy to ask that because we actively manage. But I think if one wants to go buy an index fund, I'd rather they buy an index of dividend growing stocks than the whole S&P. But yeah, we really prefer to buy them individually. But each investor has a different objective and situation. How do you see people dealing with inflation now? I think that the inflation is becoming very specific to different areas. People that have to drive a lot are still dealing with energy inflation. Mm -hmm. Gas prices have come down, but again, they're still elevated from where they were before. It's housing price inflation I'm most curious about, because I think that those prices were way too high. I want house prices to come down. Mm -hmm. I think they were in a bit of a bubble. But I also think that the Fed can actually control that. Most of the inflation we've seen, I don't think there's much the Fed Mm -hmm. can do about. Housing's a little different. By the way, don't forget about rent because rents are, are still falls. going up. That's, that's what was shown in the consumer yeah. prices these, that, this week. That's right. With that, I want to ask David about Illumina. Is this a kind of canary in the coal mine? Um, look, I think that all of these kind of biotech and pharma companies have their own situations. It's very hard to look at a monolithic. I was looking the other day because I thought that the bill that Congress passed, the Senate has passed, would be really damaging to pharma. And a lot of companies were down from it. They're going to negotiate prices of Medicare. And a lot were up. So I think you have to look at these case by case. David, you are our dividend guys. We were talking about it. Now, as I mentioned, my son goes for, for a whole bunch of stocks yeah. in one basket. If you're starting to pick... Let's start with Intel, by the way. Yeah, I went with a couple old tech names today because it's been a while since we talked about it. And these are the most out of favor of all the things that we own. We have all this energy stuff that's done so well this year. Uh, Intel has really struggled. Now, it hasn't struggled as much as some of the other chip makers, but it's down about 30 percent. And we love that entry point where you look, you have a dividend yield in the mid threes and they're reinventing around some of this manufacturing, onshoring mm-hmm. chip production. And they have that chips bill to support their and, back. And, right? and they do. Uh, I don't think it affects them as much as other companies, but it helps them. I don't really like the bill very much, but right. it is I good for either. Intel. However, the, I think that this chip manufacturing onshore is going to be a great growth story one, two, three years out. It takes a while to get online, and the market has punished Intel. I mean, it's trading at a very low P.E. Right. ratio, right. so I think it's going to be a longer-term story. By the way, story. if China invades Taiwan, which produces so many chips of its own, does that help out Intel and other chip manufacturers outside of Taiwan? It obviously would, yeah. especially if by then Ohio and Arizona are online. Yeah. So there's a national security story there as well. All right. Cisco, what's happening there? Cisco is a great company, still growing free cash flow and yet down on the year with a 4% dividend yield. And you have a, a really, really neat reinvention where they're getting more recurring revenue, a subscription model on their software services that supplements that old network and router business. So they're just I think a great old tech story that is well positioned for new economy. David, you are a California guy and a New York guy because you love paying more taxes. I know that's the reason. But (laughs) but bottom line is, I mean, there's so many cases recently where business owners are forced to either be cops checking uh, vaccine records or now being social workers. It just it just doesn't make sense to me. Well, and we were talking about how in Upper West Side, they tried it in New York City post COVID, where there were hotels that they were having take homeless in. And it really converted whole neighborhoods. They were they were not equipped to Although deal that with that was in, in fairness. That was that was a voluntary system. They had these empty rooms and they made a deal 
with with the city oh. government to fill the empty rooms. And this is this is forcing oh, right. businesses. And I I just can't what what it seems to me being they failed miserably to cure the homeless problem from a public policy point of view. And they're passing the buck to business owners. Well, first of all, they didn't even acknowledge the homeless problem was a problem. They almost looked at it as if there was something glamorous about it. They set up these tent encampments. So until we first recognize that it's not dignifying to human beings to be homeless and to stay in their drug abuse, mental illness and other economic and social problems, you have to care about the human person enough to fix it. But you don't fix it by blending it in an unsafe situation with other families and tourists and so forth. This policy idea is a disaster. You know, you probably weren't around when this happened, but the way Giuliani dealt with it when he was mayor and he dealt with it extraordinarily well he sent a cop with a social worker to every homeless person they could find in the street said you have many options you could go with a social worker get food get a job whatever you need but you don't have the option of staying here if you stay here the policeman is going to escort you away if you if you go with a social worker all is solved and the the problem was essentially solved that way david great to see you for the hour thank you very much for being here appreciate it